and like nine times out of ten, you know, almost, almost all the time, it's not, it's not because you're a bad person with like, I don't even like, they use the word character defect in AA. And, and really? AA. Yeah, and I'm like, well, I understand what they're saying. Like, interpreting people's desire to help you as meddling and then getting super defensive about it is a character defect. But it's not because you're, you are a defective character. It's usually like unresolved trauma and really bad coping skills from like living in a dysfunctional community so long that you, you know, adapted very unhealthy coping mechanisms and then you take it into other situations where they're not applicable. Everybody's looking at you like, what? What the hell, man? What's your problem? Hmm. And it's the only way you've only ever known how to handle it. To, like... You know, like, for for me, fighting for my own autonomy, to have any autonomy at all, was, uh, was a serious fight. Every day. So I just kind of got... Fighting into, against what for your own autonomy? Well, my parents, especially my mother. Like... There was no way you could be a self unless you fought hard, hmm. hard. You had to be really aggressive in order to get one inch of your own. Really? Yep. So then I went out into a world where everybody sort of has already gone through the herd, you know, jostling, shoving on the way to the chute. You know, they, they already found their place in the world by the time they're a man, and it's not a big deal. People disrespect their personal space space or they they know exactly how much you can push somebody in the name of good fun or pecking order and what's too far and I just like if they started pecking order stuff with me I just cut the jugular and say we don't play that game here really and yeah and I mean people are just like what's wrong with this guy yeah that's one thing I was talking to somebody about like some homeschool and families not having um gone through that kind of stuff puts you at a severe disadvantage. It does. Like there's just certain little things that being on a job or being with normal people will kind of beat out of you. Certain like annoying or just yeah, knowing how to deal with it. And most jobs, you know, the point of the job is to get the work done. And if you've got if we've got to figure out what your problem is and you know, like they they like I look I don't even know what your problem is and I don't care just go be somebody else's problem <laughs> and you know you, yeah I'd even ask them like what do you th they'd say what is your problem I said I don't know if, can you tell I told a, a uh, principal of a public school one time when I was a student teacher he said what is your issue and I said I don't know do you if you know I'd appreciate it if you tell me really yeah. I said, because I don't even know what you're talking about. So if you say, like, look, this is what I'm seeing, or, this is what I what I call it, then I'd appreciate if you bring it to life. At least give you a starting point. Yeah. yeah, like, for my own personal growth. And no, people do, are not ready to do that. They just want you to get together or get out. So to find a community of people that's like, look, we know from the get-go you've got issues. And we're going to be... We're going to give you the time and space you need to work through them and help you any we can. And that's what AANA has been to you. And the, and the farm. And the farm. Just any recovery for, scene. Yeah. I was, I mean, they were a little bit too laid back, I'd say. They didn't, they didn't really push anybody. But if you said, like, look, I'm not going to be good for anything for the next two days, I'd really, like don't want to see anybody talk to anybody I'm going through some really hard stuff I need to go up in the mountains and they'd just be like alright see you on the flip side I'm like you can't just tell any boss like I'm not working for the next two days I have personal issues I just like dug up some trauma I forgot about and I need to go pray about it peace so, but you can't start that you can't even start digging around until you have stopped self medicating There. Hey, what's so important? 
What you got here, that's worth living for. Is there any more? When there isn't going to be any famine anymore, there isn't going to be any poverty anymore, there isn't going to be any war anymore. It's the only empire that isn't predicated on violent coercion. Christ empire. Yeah. It's the only one. All of the rest, until then, are temporary, not even close competition, ridiculous travesties in my mind. So, yeah, it's not that America is the worst of them, you know. It's been much worse, I think. Yeah, I think America's got so much going for it. Sure. Um, and a lot of people, even government employees, even in institutions I find destructive and evil, I'm sure are people populated with well-meaning, decent folks. Yeah, everybody thinks they're doing what's right, I guess. I think, like, the, the main thing, I listening to Snowden, I used to listen to Snowden anyway. Um, I was listening to Snowden one time. They asked him, like, so why, what happened September 11th that, like, nobody knew what was going on? Like, was it not, was it because the CIA and the FBI weren't sharing information, like they said? Or were they just flying blind? How did they not know this was going to happen? You know, and of course, that raises speculation as to whether they knew it was going to happen. Let it happen, or he said, no, no, no. You have to understand that human, all humans, no matter how, how big or small you are, one of the main things you have to understand about humans is that main motivation most of their energy goes into is covering their own butt. So nobody wanted the hammer to come down on them personally for having let it slip. So it's just like, hmm. I mean, you know, like I'm not going to take the fall for this giant travesty. So everybody just kind of let it, you know, they deflected the the attention from themselves. Hmm. He's like, you have no idea how what a powerful force it is that people do not want to assume to be the fall guy hmm. um, or take responsibility and say, yeah, I, I, you know, I was working on that. Oh, and they were all competing. That's what they were all. I want to, I want to break this first. Like, I want to be able to say the break FBI the yeah. stopped this terrorist attack or the CIA stopped this terrorist attack. Like, I want the glory for it. But then when it went wrong, nobody wanted to take the responsibility for it. Hmm. And yeah, there are just certain things that all human beings have in common on, you know, even on a, if you work on a construction crew, sure. like something is done wrong and some, you know, the inspector says, who did this wrong? All of a sudden, nobody built the house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess that just applies across the board. It's like, just, you're dealing with humans human beings in the left right scene what would you say is the most dangerous idea right now on the left and on the right um put you on it for a minute yeah there's so much where you start <laughs> <laughs> Competition stiff. The the faith in your source of information of, on both sides blows my mind. Really? They're just people think I've got the truth because I'm like, where'd you read that? And they half the time can't tell you and you know, the other time it's like I only listen to this one thing because they're the only ones worth listening to. It's like, like that to me is really like the immature and delusional. The people trust their sources. Yeah, and that they that they have a pure pure data, like or that the is data is not. Yeah, yeah, and that the data is not. I mean, I think personally, one of the things that Trump fairly brought to. I mean, obviously, people knew this before, but I remember when he said, "The facts are true; the news is fake." That to me was That's right. he nailed it, and I, I look at newspapers all the time. And I see data presented. The data is factual, but the way they're presenting it is so disingenuous. You know, there are ways to 
to be true and still be fake news. And I think right. most news is like that. Yeah. You know, you can't disprove it, but, but it's, it's just not the full story, or it's a certain out of context, or it's skewed somehow, or even just, you know, the, the picture on the, you know. Right. You know, they'll, they'll, you'll see some, like, giant country. spike, and you're like, oh, my gosh. And then you realize, oh, that's just, like, one day when it went from 31 to 32, mm -hmm. and they just zoomed in on the graph. Right. Like, you zoom out, and it's just like, you know. Right. Or something like that. So you're saying that's a big problem on both sides. It's just people. But what that about the flip side? Thing. You were talking about how your buddy Ivan was castigating you for... Having doubt on everything. Doubting everything. Casting aspersion on all facts. Right. Like, and that's saying that's what they way, want. Right. That's one way that the... You know, people who, the, who who are trying to stay in control of a thing, they just say, like, don't believe anything you hear. They're like, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain kind of thing. And it, it's like cast aspersion on all facts. Like, if you're planning on fracking and, and digging into oil reserves and taking over other sovereign nation states and all that kind of stuff, sometimes, you know, science isn't on your side. And <laughs> they're just like, no, so, you know, you can't believe what those people are saying. They're crazy. They're like, it's perfectly safe. And... <laughs> So, and it just kind of applies to everything. To, you know, the CDC says, like, be real careful. There's some really dangerous stuff going on. It's like, yeah, you're not going to get me with that one, you know. <laughs> and it's like, oh, no, we've gotten beyond fact. We've gotten beyond fact. Well, that's it. So, I mean, where are we at now? Because on the one hand, it's like, well, people trust their sources. That's a problem. On the other hand distrusting everything kind of plays into the hands of the powers that be that can kind of everything's like ah, nothing matters because everything is kind of so where does that leave us honestly it's here's <coughs> where people don't like what i have to say it's always been this way we just used to all believe the same thing and we were wrong but we were wrong together we were wrong together well is there room for that where Okay, you know, language is a wonderful gift from God, but it's imperfect. You know, perception's always imperfect. The narrative is always slightly off. And when you have, like, but two it's, cultures that meet, and they're, you know, like, when you have just two people, like, you know, Amazonian people and Andean people run into each other, and it's just like aliens, and then, right. you know, eventually they, you know... So I mean, part of it dialectic, is just it's like they're able to South Americans, but at this point, the whole world is meeting each other. Well, that's the thing. Like there is no no idea anymore of of an actual culture. So um, that brings me to the second part of answering your question. Uh, on the right, they're just hitting the brakes as hard as they can into the future. Like we do not want globalism. We don't even, some of us don't even want nationalism. Like, local communities, we protect what we have, we protect our families. Our you say that's an idea on the right. Yeah. And that's a good idea or it's a bad good. idea? I mean, it's, I see how it is good. Right. Like, like I, I don't need to have a central, a central, you know, source of power running my life from 3,000 miles away. We're 10,000 miles away if, you know, we're heading into it. Um, they're not my people. Like, right. I'm going to be with my people. So this tribalism that, that the left's really freaked out about, I can see the, you know, the value of having a strong community that makes its own independent decisions. Yeah, that to me, that's, I think we're getting out of the crux of things. Because, like... But when you when you see anyone who's different than you as the enemy, and it's really easy, you're really suggestible. Like, look, you've got enemies. They're brown. They don't speak English. They don't worship Jesus. Right. Let's nuke them. Right. Cool. That's the problem. Right. But the flip side of that, the complete lack of a homogenous identity and of a neighborhood and... I don't know. How to resolve that paradigm is a big question for me. 
but I mean that that not paradigm that 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 conflict because and I think it, it's one that runs across the left right thing because I mean all my hippie friends are all like oh we need to just you know and I know hippie friends aren't the only brand of the left but you know a lot of my leftist friends want to you know have a little commune where we all you know hang out and sing kumbaya um and that's really like a core idea on the right um whatever the right may mean even if you look at like the new right which would be like you know trumpy rednecks really what trumpy rednecks want is like their little neighborhood of trumpy rednecks um who all understand each other and you know whatever um so anyway they're, they're two versions of the same kind of thing and like you said it's the source of a lot of problems and all um, wars and yeah. stuff are like hey they don't smell my, like me they don't look like me but to get rid of that is to get rid of any sense of idea uh, identity I don't know I, I think again the solution is worse than the problem now one, th one thing I really admire about my friends on the left is that they genuinely want what's best for everyone I can't honestly say that about myself <laughs> like, I wish I was the kind of person that wanted what was best for everybody that'd be cool <laughs> But you think people on the left do? So Some my friends, on your the friends, left. your particular I, friends I on the left. I don't know the other people <laughs> want what's best for everyone. What yeah. do you mean by that? Like, like if if we could all if have a lighter load to bear and a little bigger piece of the pie, mm -hmm. you know, we'd be living us a pretty good life. It's just like, like all you have to do is participate in this system that. It like when you throw your weight into the system, it feeds you. Stone soup. It type. educates your children. It builds your all throw in. your monorail systems. It keeps the sun from cooking us. It keeps the volcanoes from going off. It keeps yeah, the coronavirus. The vaccines, it keeps right. the coronavirus from killing us. It keeps our it like and, and and everything will be balanced and harmonious. We'll have a system that works you just yeah. have to go along with this plan of people who know more than you do the experts experts and everything will be fine and it's like have you ever read a history book one history book like it has never ever happened never and it's kind of in some ways like each successive experiment has been a little bit worse than the one before it i mean as far as like you know, government's trying to put a chicken in everybody's pot. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it just kind of depends on what your standard is. But what's, I mean, my, what's the alternative? Unfortunately, my standard is, is how are the people on the bottom of the totem pole had being treated? Hmm. And, like, people are like, oh, at least we don't, like, sacrifice people on pyramids anymore, you know, like, rip their hearts out and pray for rain and stuff. It's like, no, we do it real quiet. Hmm. Like... We don't, like, have everybody gather and have a public sacrifice. We have myths of sacrifice. We just, like, you never see them. Hmm. You never have to deal with the mess. Like, well, we don't... Who, we've, who would... What, the, what is that to you? Like, what represents that in the American system? Though? Abortion, for one. Like, they just... You never see the mess. You never it's see the mess. In a, a medical, what do you call, hazardous waste bag. And nobody ever sees it. And they, if you ever do show someone what it looks like, they get very, very angry because that's way too much cognitive dissonance for anybody. Yeah. Um, it was for me, and I, I mean, I've always kind of been that way. That you know, being th believing that life is sacred. When it, when encountered with bare negative facts, I I think I fainted. I was mm. so overwhelmed with it. Um. Mm. And, like, what we're doing, we. That's the thing. Who's we? Um, but what our empire that we're participating in and... Um, benefiting from. Benefiting from. We are the beneficiaries of the the people who are have been running things for 
a hundred years or so. Um, in league with their allies, you know, like Saudi Arabia, like what they are doing to the Yemenis people right now is should be something that we should all like stop what we're doing, like, stop going to church, stop going to school and stop going to work and and stop driving trucks and and like shut it down until we are done massacring the Yemenis people mm. so that the Saudi Arabians can profit more off of Yemenis oil. Mm. There's no there's no reason other than money that like 80,000 children are starving their mothers are watching them starve to death before their eyes uh, a year like 80,000 children a year starving to death mm -hmm. because the United States planes and boats are blockading anything from getting into them um, like that's a like a deal breaker in my mind but do we we have no idea like we don't ever see the no and even those of us that do I don't know if we're lazy or we feel powerless or what but I mean what are we doing you and I know about a lot of things going on right and it's like I'm still going to work yeah you know I just bought a big diesel truck I'm like life is good yeah America yeah um maybe I shouldn't be you know maybe we do our you know each one does their small part and over time um I don't know I don't know I'm still I'm hopeful when I look at the future oddly I'm not you know I look at all of the trends getting worse and I'm not delusional about where things are headed in the short term I do believe that Christ is going to draw all men unto him. He, and not just all men, and not just all human beings. That's all right. Creation. The cosmos. The cosmos, the creation, he is going to redeem it. Um, I don't know how that looks. What? I like to imagine it. Like, I think most of the scriptures on the subject are the imagination of the writer. Hmm or some, you know, vision that they had or whatever, but, like, I like to spark the imagination in other people. Like, how do you see it coming down? Like, what does the kingdom of God mean to you? Like, mm. what does the new world mean to you? What does the resurrection, living in, in new bodies, you know, having our bodies remade, mm. like, when we see him, we'll be like him, but, you know, we'll see him as he is, so we'll be, we'll be like him, we'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye um what is it, what do you think we're going to look like what do you think our nature is going to be what do you think our capability is going to be what kind of a world are we going to be living in and 90 something percent of people say I've never thought about it I have no idea I, I like I don't think about it at all I think that's a great first step right you know I've heard people say I'm not married you are, but I've heard, you know, one of the things you just kind of hear is sort of, it's like, if you find yourself, you know, in a relationship where you don't love the other person, a good first step is just to do the things that you would do if you did love them. Obviously, that's not a silver bullet, but it starts orienting you in the right direction. It's just to do the things, and maybe that's, you know, maybe the first step for us is like, Okay, we look around us and there's a lot of problems. But why don't we just start imagining? What would we do? How do we act? What's life going to be like when all things are restored? And having that picture available to us maybe informs our daily choices and maybe helps bring it to pass. But it helps me from getting overwhelmed by the darkness, too. Mm. Like, it says don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Like, you've got to keep your meditation positive, or you, I will... I need to keep my meditation positive, or I will be up on the fourth floor, you know, Western State, <laughs> quick. So, um...
Yeah. So yeah, like the exercise of of envisioning what God wants. What it, it you know, He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's He's not like He's not slow to to uh, fulfill His promise. Like He's going to do what He said He's going to do, and even you know, we we I. The way that we think of history so often is like we're getting more and more light about the you know we're we're progressing and, and we're figuring out what God's plan is. But I think like when Mary was told she's going to be the mother of Jesus, I just like love to think about what was going in, on inside her head. Hmm. She was like, finally, like your promises are going to come true to somebody like me like to be used like this to bring about the upsetting of the entire universe to bring the rich and powerful down to nothing and lift up the humble and um like to bring good things through me like and she understood like this is a complete transformation of the universe mm. nothing's going to be the same anymore after this this is this is the revolution hmm. being born through me. And so, like, and even, like, you know, non-Judeo-Christian, almost every tribe has some legend about the, the Golden Dawn where war ends. Um, you know, like the, the Zoroastrians. I've been reading up on... Uh, they knew that all of this fighting and tribalism and, and violence and cruelty and suffering... Um, and is going to be brought to an end by the one who designed it. Um, mm. Doesn't want it to be the way that it is now. And isn't just going to say, well, fine, I'm done. Like, wash my hands of this stupid project. I'm like, just throw it in the trash bin and start over. It's like, no, I said when I made it, it's good. And I'm going to make it what I want it to be. Mm. So, uh, uh, like not giving up on his own creation and the people that he loves. So, if you have not completely got it through your head that God loves every single thing and person equally, that um, that he created without any kind of reservation or condition. The, one of the craziest things Jesus said is love your enemies. Um, it's because he knew that that's where you haven't got God's mind yet. If they're still... I mean, you're going to have enemies. Sure. Like, even if you're nice to them, they're, you know... They're still going to want you dead, or... Um, they're still going to pose a threat to your way of life. Um, there's some nasty people out there. Like just doesn't even seem like they have a soul like how can you do things like that and and be a human like they've completely lost the image of god as far as i can see and it's really scary to run into but we're to love them right just like have the faith that the same creator that made me made you and loves us both more than my own fear of what you're going to do to me and, and the way I'd like to see the world run, you know, I'd like, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, if you've ever seen the movie called uh, Life is Beautiful. The uh, Italian movie? Yeah. yeah. He's a, the boy says, why does it say no Jews or dogs <laughs> allowed? Yeah. And he says, I don't like Visigoths. You know, yeah. what do you know? Like, I don't yeah. like, no spiders and Visigoths allowed. Like, that's like, we'll make the world the way we want. We'll put up our sign, like, don't like you, stay off my turf. Anyone who comes on my turf that I told not to come on my turf is going to be met with. And I've, I've been that way. I mean, I, like I've probably still am and try not to be, but I have like been committed to like anybody who comes on my turf that I told not to come on my turf is going to have a real bad day. Um, and that's the only way we know how to run things. Like, I'm I'm the king of my domain, and the world's going to be the way I want it to be. Even, like, right now what I deal with is um, 
this is pers you know, personal. I've had people tell me, you're not the script writer. Everybody in the room has something to say hmm. and doesn't have anything to do with what you think they should say or wish they would say. Like, you are not writing the script and all the other people are characters. You're like, you're not in control of a situation. Like, when human, human beings don't like not being in control of the situation. So even in if it's not even if it's not violent, it might be manipulative in some you know in some way. Just saying like I belong in the driver's seat, and if things don't go my way, I'm going to be really pissed. Um, there's going to be consequences. And that's just like taking a place that you know. If God wanted to be that way, and like we're all little marionettes and make us say and do exactly what He wanted us to say and do, He could since He's all powerful. He is the king, and like some of my, you know, different branches of Christianity use, like to use the word sovereign, which just means king, which means he can do anything he wants to. I don't think it means does everything he wants to, and that's a conundrum maybe. But um, <laughs> like yeah. I wish, he says, I wish that you'd come to me. Like I wish that you'd give up all the things that are hurting you. I wish you'd stop believing bad things about me. I wish you'd stop doing bad things to each other. I wish you'd stop doing bad things to yourself. Mm -hmm. But it's you it's your choice to run away and do stupid things. So if if you know the first of all, if the creator who could force you to do whatever he wants you to do doesn't, then why do I have the right to do that? And second of all if the one who knows you the best has like been around for every moment of your life before you were born to now knows you better than anybody knows you knows all the worst things you've ever done and still loves you more than anybody why can't we give that to other people hmm and just say like yeah you are a mess and you're doing things that are really bad and even though I know like all the worst things about you, I'm still going to treat you like a fellow child of God. Hmm. That's uh yeah, that's it's not easy. No, it is not. It's not. <laughs>